Hey peeps, Jess here, and today we're doing an unboxing of Boxu. What's unique about Boxu, and I think the best part about it, is that they're trying to get really traditional Japanese treats, often they're collaborations. So there's actually at least one in here, I'm pretty excited about that. What's even more cool is that the very first box you get is this box, which is more of a all seasons box. I reviewed Boxu back in 2017, and this is a thing they've added since then, I thought I had to check it out because it's got Taiyaki in it, and I'm always in for Taiyaki. Let's try it. So the first thing you see here is this catalog, the Seasons of Japan guide. Things like what you'll expect if you visit. Like anyone's traveling right now, what we can dream, it, it could happen. And then they go really in depth about what the candies are. One thing I really do like here also is that they tend to include major allergens, which is so important. Clearly this is not the most allergy friendly thing, so if you're super allergic, this isn't the box for you. But if you have some mild allergies, at least you know from the get go. And then we have a thank you card from the founder. Not only do I get my box each month, but I get a discount. That's nice. They have an online market with lots of cool treats on it. So let's try some. So first we have the Dondon Yaki, and they are a senbei, which is a kind of really crunchy rice cracker, usually covered in soy sauce or some kind of soy flavor. And this one is tonkatsu sauce. Okay, they're really small and cute. Smells like soy, a little bit of pepper. So that could be fun. Cheers. That is a really satisfying crunch to get this lovely crispy crunchiness and then soy and definitely a lot of pepper. So these remind me a lot flavor wise actually of American barbecue chips. There's kind of that ketchup tanginess going on, but with soy and pepper. These are really crunchy. I could totally see eating a billion of them. They're fun. I do really wish this had a tasting order. I'm sitting here having had the first thing and I'm remembering that the tea is likely a green tea and that plus green tea is gonna be kind of weird. It would really help to have a tasting order just so you're not overwhelming your palate. Next, we have the 20th century pear. This is a long de chat, which translates to cat's tongue from French. It refers to a really thin, crispy cookie, kind of like a Milano if you think of American cookies, but much thinner and very, very crisp. But apparently with pear, cheese, and white chocolate, this could be really fun. It fell. Ignoring our fallen brethren, this is two super shatteringly thin cookies with sort of a, almost like a wedge of cheese, but filling in the center. And it smells of white chocolate. It reminds me very much of pokey smell. Like that just sweet lightness that you get with white chocolate sometimes. Cheers. So yeah, the cookies, super duper crisp, little buttery, and then the filling melts as you chew. I'm not really getting that pear flavor as much as I like. I'm getting white chocolate and then kind of pear aroma. I like more pear. I like more cheese actually. Like pear and cheese can be really good. And so I just wish I had more coming through. I will say in that second bite though, I got a little bit more pear flavor. It's more of an afternote still, but if you want like a very delicate tea cookie with aroma of pear, try this cookie. So next we have, <laughs> a bit of a long name. Next we have the Aomori Apple Caramel Yakoi Sable. In the catalog, it reminds me that Aomori is the apple prefecture of Japan and a sable cookie is a crisp cookie. So I'm looking forward to something that would go well with tea, which I kind of want to find the tea now. Give me a second. Ooh, yes, good call. So the tea from them is their own blend. It is a genmaicha. If you haven't had genmaicha before, it's one of my favorites for introducing people to green tea. So it's green tea with toasted brown rice. When I want to it's standalone, but isn't super intense, I really do love genmaicha. So I'm pretty excited about this. Also, it's gonna be amazing with the cookie. I'll be right back. So we've got the genmaicha. As you can see, it's a really, really delicate color. It only made three ounces. So I'm like, might as well just show it off. It smells incredibly roasted. That, now that might be my fault. In this case, there are really specific instructions. That is, boil three ounces of water, let cool to 80 degrees C, then steep. I don't really have a way to measure that, and so I just ran an errand in the house, let it cool a little bit, then steeped. It does smell really nice, though. Cheers. It's more delicate than I was expecting based on the aroma. So the aroma is very roasted, very strong, the actual tea is rather delicate. You have this very, very floral green tea note with just the barest hint of roastiness. So I may have been bad to the tea, but it's still tasty. It's a really good sipping genmaicha. And then, and then at the end, you have this lovely earthy bitterness. 
You missed the cookie jumping out of the wrapper, so that was fun. And if you can hear the rain, it is pouring out, doing my best in the mic, but kind of feels appropriate for green tea and apple cookies. It's fall. Cookie smells of apple jam. You can see this lovely buttery cookie with the apple jammy center. Pretty excited about that. Expecting a somewhat crisp cookie, but with a soft center. Cheers. It's very apple aroma. I'm trying to remember what this reminds me of because it reminds me of something I ate a lot as a kid. It has that sweet apple syrupy note to it. The apple is definitely the star of the show. You can kind of taste the cookie, but it's really all about the apple center. Let's try it with the tea. The cookie and the tea together is the way to go because then you have the sweetness from the apple and then the green tea is kind of this lovely bitter note bringing it all together. Yeah, I would definitely do this as a tea tasting rather than individual snacks. Next, we have the Funwari Meijin Mochi Puffs Kinako. Oh, cool. So they are mochi puffs made to be super light and crisp, and then they have kinako or roasted soy powder on the outside. This is very up my alley. This looks awesome. So you have this giant, super airy looking puff and this really hearty amount of coating on the outside. This looks awesome. Cheers. Okay, these are really good. The actual mochi melts almost immediately as soon as you put your tongue with this really delicate texture to it, like it's just gone. But you have the kinako. If you haven't had kinako before, it's kind of like peanut butter. There's that same nuttiness to it. And so as soon as the texture dissolves, you're left with this wonderful nuttiness. Yeah, I could eat these all day. That's really good. So next we have the Puku Puku Tai chocolate. So Monoka is a kind of filled cookie. They have two crispy thin layers and they're traditionally filled with azuki or red bean paste. And this has chocolate and I am here for this. Oh, it's so cute. So this is, this is giant. I love how big it is. This is a, practically a meal size Monoka. So the ones I've had are like this big and that's it. So this, this is giant. The weird thing about this I will say it's a weird thing, and I wish they had the full ingredients, is that this apparently includes mollusks, shellfish, and I'd really like to know where. We'll find out. Cheers. Okay, that was not what I was expecting. The mousse filling is really, really aerated. Kind of like an kind of like an arrow bar or honeycomb. It's super light in there and fluffy with a very soft chocolate note and then you get the crispiness from the cookie wafers. If you like Kit Kats or Quadratini wafers, any kind of wafer cookie, this is probably gonna be one for you. I wish the chocolate flavor was a little bit more intense because I just want more chocolate, but it's a really nice cocoa flavor to it with a kind of salty afternote. Next, we have the Boksu collaboration with Daimonji Handcrafted Candy. These, these are Yuzu Sake candy and are apparently a little bit alcoholic and I'm a little bit nervous because it's been a while since I've had booze. I can smell a really gentle citrus scent, but not much. Cheers. It's a hard candy, and as you suck on it, you get this really gentle yuzu flavor. Yuzu is really that lovely sweet sour. It reminds me of lime with a je ne sais quoi. There's, something I, there's a distinctness to yuzu that's really hard to explain, but it is very delicate and lovely. I'm not actually getting much of the sake. It's kind of there as like an afternote, like you kind of get a bitterness that I associate with sake, but it's not the dominant flavor in the candy. I only wish they were smaller because I just don't want to eat that much hard candy, but the flavor is really nice. Next <laughs> next we have Mochan Dango Mochi. Yeah, I don't really see a flavor listed, but they're cute. They're mochi. Let's try them. When you get them out, they're just little mochi, different colors, probably all the same flavor. They're very cute, nice and pillowy, and they're dusted in what feels like sugar. Cheers. These are very, very sweet. As it is sugar on the outside, and so all you're getting is sugar and a little bit of chewy softness. It does work to balance the Gen Maicha and bring a bit of sweetness, but I'd rather eat other mochi, sadly. I think, yeah, I feel like those are for kids. Those are very sweet, kid-friendly mochi. We've got another collab in here. These are with Honma Seka of Hokkaido, and they are Hokkaido red bean donuts and they smell like fried goodness. If you haven't had red bean before in desserts, it is so not what you're thinking. It's not like Mexican food. It is sweet with a bit of savory and earthiness and it's really tasty. Oh, cheers. It is sadly a little dry, that happens in transit, but the red bean filling is nicely earthy and a little bit sweet. You have the nice fried goodness from the dough of the donuts and it does work really well with the Genmaicha. I just wish it wasn't so dry. 
Next we have the matcha chocolate stick cake and one cool thing is the matcha is from Uji in Kyoto which is known for its high quality matcha. And the chocolate inside is apparently bittersweet chocolate. Hope it made through transit okay. You know, wildfires. It smells like matcha. I will say I'm not a huge fan of matcha desserts, believe it or not, so I'm very curious to see how this tastes. Cheers. This is a very gently soft cake with a matcha aroma and a lot more chocolate than it looks like. There's deceptively a lot of chocolate in here, which does actually balance it out and give you more of a rounded chocolate and matcha earthiness going on. And now I'm curious if it's good with the genmaicha. Mm. This is one where I would not pair it with the genmaicha actually. It, it brought a lot of bitterness that didn't help the cake, but the cake itself is lovely and soft and maybe with, maybe I'd pair with something lighter and more delicate or maybe a senja to go with the matcha or matcha and matcha, but I would not pair it with the genmaicha. All right, so last of the sweets, we have the white strawberry. This is another boxu collab, and the one I'm most worried about, both because I'm technically allergic to strawberries and because this took a while to get here, so I'm worried about how the chocolate did in transit. All right, first off, this is just cool looking. So it's literally a freeze-dried strawberry, just a whole strawberry with white chocolate inside. And it smells like strawberry. I'm not really smelling the white chocolate, it smells like freeze-dried strawberry. So, cheers. So that was not the experience I was expecting at all. And it's fun. So you think of freeze-dried berries, you think of like that shatteringness of freeze-dried fruit. And because there's so much chocolate in there, it's just sort of hard instead. Like ideally I would chop it into pieces to share because it's so big. The white chocolate is a touch sweet, but it works here because the strawberry is so intense. They kind of mellow each other out and get that strawberries and cream flavor going, but with a natural strawberry flavor rather than something more sweet like pokey. Oh, we're not done. We still got savories to go. Next, we have the stick potato supa mucho plum. So these are umeboshi and shiso crispy potato sticks, which is gonna be really intense. Umeboshi pickle plum is already intense and they've added shiso leaves to bring in some herbal. This is gonna be a lot of flavor. They're little itty bitty shoestring potatoes. They don't smell like a lot besides potato though, which has me worried. Like, how secretly intense are these? Cheers. Okay, so it builds. There's like potato, and then the sourness pickle plum, and then shiso hits it with the herbal, and then it all sort of comes together with the potato at the end. Like, there's a lot happening. I think I'd prefer these without the shiso personally, just because I'm not a huge fan of how the herbalness takes over, because I love the whole sour, salty combination here. And they're good. I just wouldn't eat a lot of them because the shiso would win by the end of it. Next, these are the seaweed tempura, setochi sudachi, and they are flavored with sudachi citrus, which I've never had before. This is gonna be fun. So you have seaweed on one side and the crispy guys on the other with some seaweed flakes on top, and it just smells of citrus. It's not yuzu like earlier, but there's this definite citrus intensity going on. Very sour smelling, in a good way, in a good citrus way. Oh, cheers. I said I wanted sour, but that's a lot of sour. So you have two things happening. You have the sourness, the citrus sourness, and then you have fishiness. It's not bad fishiness, but there's a lot of it. And all of it's very crispy and savory. I hear someone who's into sour snacks who wants something savory. This might work for you. It's not my jam. I'm glad I tried it. It's just really intense. I was not expecting that much fish flavor though. Like it's, it's fish. Th this sounds safer. This is an edamame sembe, another rice cracker. And then it's also got kinako on top, so we're getting more nuttiness with edamame. I, I am in for some safe treat right now. I love how it's this adorable cloud shape, very fluffy cloud and covered in powder. Hopeful. Cheers. Okay, this is what I needed. It's got really great crunch, and then a little bit of soy, and then a little bit of nuttiness from the kinako, and soy flavor from the soybeans. This is wonderfully savory. It kind of feels like you're trying all of ways of soy at once, and I'm here for this. It's also really filling. Like, I'd be, I'm quite happy with this one. Looks like I missed a sweet. This is the Black Sesame Taiko Kunamon design, and these are made in Kumamoto. Cool. Now what's really cool about these is it's roasted almonds and sesame seeds mixed with sugar syrup over heat to make this flat cookie. It has this absolutely gorgeous texture to it from the sesame seeds because it's just it's straight up sesame seeds and almonds. That's all it is, with sugar syrup holding it together. This is just beautiful. Cheers. You would better like sesame seeds because that's the star of the show. 
you got sesame, a little bit of almond, a little bit of sweet, but it's very much towards savory as far as sweet desserts go. Yay. We have an uni rice cracker. Oh yay. My favorite. I do like that it's got nicely toasted spots on it and it looks very crunchy. <sighs> Cheers. I'm not a fan. It's got a really nice texture and there's a lovely savoriness from soy and probably the umaminess of the uni. It does have a nice sweet note to it as well, but it's not crunchy enough. I'm not a fan of this profile and I can feel the brininess coming in and I'm not a fan of this. No, I've never been so glad I have water in standby. So that's Boksu, at least the first Boksu. My thoughts, least favorite, the uni crackers and these guys, the Satoshi Sudachi. They just didn't do it for me. I don't think I'm ever gonna be a fan of fish citrus crackers like that, even though I like fish with citrus. It just didn't work. Favorite, these guys. These Kinako Puffs are amazing. I would eat them all the time. Like this amount is a perfect serving, but as a treat, these are great. And my overall thoughts. I feel like boksu is something that's best experienced as a group. Like this was fun, I enjoyed trying everything, but it's gonna be way more fun when I go downstairs and take them to my spouse and go, eat this. And I feel like that's kind of just what it's for. Like it's for eating with groups, sharing, experiencing together. Like I would even do this on Zoom in this weird world. That would be a great time. My one big frustration with the box is that there aren't a lot of duplicates. In people's reviews, I've seen that a lot of them come with two of each thing, and in this box there just weren't that many duplicates, so I can't easily share with people later on. It's all open and I get to eat it all today instead. Is that a bad thing for someone having a bad day and want to try everything? No! But I really feel like this box is all about sharing, especially at its price point, which I think is like $45. So yeah, I'd really rather have this thing I can share, especially with that Genmaicha. Would I get it again? Yes, I do wish it came in a smaller amount. I just don't need this much stuff most of the time, but it was really fun and I got to try some things that I hadn't had before, and I basically grew up in a Japanese grocery store. So that, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Have you tried Boksu? What did you think? Have you tried this box? It was pretty fun. As always, it's great hanging out with you. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already so we can hang out on more dessert videos, and I will catch you next time. Later. The biggest problem with doing review boxes is by the time I am done, there's like dessert everywhere and so I'm trying to figure out how to safely get out of this without like knocking cookies everywhere.